Hey guys, how's it going? So today in my hand, I have a really cool lens to show you guys. This is the Pentax 50mm f4 SMC Macro Tacomar. It's a mouthful to say, but this is a really amazing lens. I picked this lens up on eBay for $85, including shipping from Japan in mere mint condition. This camera lens right now is ranging from $80 to, I think, $150 on eBay. So if you're able to get your hands on one of these at the lower price point, it is a killer deal. At first, I wasn't sure about purchasing a manual focus vintage lens. I had just recently sold all my Canon gear out of Canon 6D, Sigma lenses, and Canon lenses, and I sold them all because I really needed something lighter for travel. And that 6D and with all that glass was just too heavy. Even, you know, for sh three to four hour trips, it was just too much equipment to hold. And the best way for me to kind of get rid of the weight was to go mirrorless, and I eventually settled on the Fuji X-T2. Of course, I had to sell my Canon 100mm 2.8 macro, because it was pretty heavy as well. And I really did miss it after I sold it, so I went online, was thinking about dropping hundreds of dollars again on a macro lens made for the Fuji, but I decided against it because I didn't really want to spend that much money, and I really want to go with something much smaller like this one. I went on eBay and found many versions of this lens. And at first I thought, $85. How great is an $85 lens? It's a vintage lens. How is the image quality going to be? I went online, saw some pictures. They look fairly decent, but of course I wasn't completely convinced and it so happened a really good copy of this lens was available for sale from Japan and I quickly picked it up because I was seeing good condition but not mint condition versions of this lens for much more so let's go take a deeper dive into this lens and um, at the very end I will also show you some of the pictures I took with this lens and I'm sure you're gonna be blown away by the quality that this lens can offer. The aesthetics of this lens, just by looking at it, you can tell it's an older lens. This lens is, is probably around 40 years old, if not more. This is the third version of the lens. It was manufactured sometime in the 70s, but, the, but regardless, this build quality is, it is superb. It is hefty, all metal construction. Um, I mean, this thing has some weight to it. I'm quite surprised at how heavy it was uh, when I first took it out of the box. Focus ring is in the front. Pretty wide, pretty grippy. And this thing is so buttery smooth. It is a pleasure to twist this thing around and just to... It's, it's hard to describe the feeling unless you really try to focus it yourself. I've owned some really nice Canon L glass and they do not focus this smooth. As for the design, the inner ring here you see it's made in Japan by Asahi Optical Company, which is now called Pentax. This is the SMC version, which stands for Super Multi Coated. It is a macro lens, macro Takamar. F4 at 50 millimeters. The design really stands out to me because, as you know, in most camera camera lenses, the, the first glass element, the front glass element, is way out in the front. Well, the glass element in the front is all the way in the back, which makes me need to believe the lens or the first piece of glass is probably somewhere right here. The neat thing about this, this design is you don't need a lens hood and so this allows you to get pretty close to the subject and from the front back towards the lens is like a funnel conical shape that goes inwards. A very unique design indeed. Uh, very cool. Now let's talk about the mount. This is a vintage lens 
And of course, it will not fit on my Fuji X-T2 because this is a M42 mount. It is a screw-on mount. The M42 mount was, I believe, developed sometime in the 1930s. At least that's what Wikipedia tells me. And of course, if I need to put this on my camera, on my X-T2, I need an adapter. So this is my M42 adapter. Got it for less than $10 on, on Amazon. It's called a Dallas. I guess that's the name of the brand. Dallas M42-FX for the FX mount for the Fuji. Uh, for about $10, maybe less, you get an all-metal construction mount, which is very, very, very nice. So the way it works is very simple. I'll just screw these on together, and they're really easy to screw on. It's just a metal to metal. Uh, it feels really nice. The, the threads for the screws match up perfectly. And once that's done, it does add a bit of length, of course. This thing is about half the length of this lens, so it's adding about 50% of length onto the lens. But you know what? It's still much lighter than my, my Canon macro lens. And then I'll just snap this onto my Fuji. And with focus peaking and manual mode, this thing is such a joy to use. It actually blew me away. I had very low expectations for this lens and as I got to understand how to use it better how to really take advantage of what focus peaking has to offer I really ended up enjoying this lens in fact this is now one of my favorite lenses in my collection and the best thing is it only cost me $85 amazing let's talk about the weight of the lens this thing weighs 248 grams by itself. So I'm not including the weight with the adapter here. But 248 grams, that's about 8.7 ounces. So you're talking about a little more than half a pound for this lens. That's pretty heavy, but I'm guessing a lot of lenses made during this time period are all, are all pretty hefty. Four elements in three groups. It's 49 millimeter filter size. Uh, I don't probably will not be putting any filters on this thing anytime soon. As I said before, 50 millimeters f4. My Canon was a 2.8, so I do lose a, a stop of light, which I thought was very concerning at first, but coupled with the camera's really pretty good, decent ISO performance and a steady hand. I have not had any issues so far with this. And of course, I'm not going to use this in a very low light setting. And if I did use it in a low light setting, I would bring a flash along with me. In terms of magnification, this is a 1 and 2 magnif magnification or a 0.5 magnification if you uh, put in a percentage. 0.5. Much different than my Canon 100, which was a one-to-one -one, or 100% magnification. And I thought at first that would be a deal breaker, uh, but I was so curious about this lens because it was so cheap, I decided to buy anyway, right? Um, such a great deal. And the fact that I can get really close to my subjects with this thing, and I don't need to get into, say, microscopic levels to get, get the shot, the 0.5 magnification is, it's fine. Um, the clarity, the sharpness that comes from this lens is simply amazing. Truly is a really, really great lens. If you can get your hands on it, or if you're looking to explore more into macro photography, or even if you already have a bunch of macro lenses, it doesn't matter. Uh, at this price point, uh, get, get an, an adapter for your, for, for your camera, it's a great camera to play around with. It's also really great with portraits. So this is a highly recommended lens. And I hope you guys can uh, find, out, find your hands on a very, very decent copy so you can really get to enjoy this lens. All right, 
Now we're down to accessories. I love taking close-up pictures of flowers, insects, and so forth. And I can get pretty close and get really good pictures of little creepy, you know, creepy crawlies and, and so forth. But since I had my my Canon 100mm, I had Kenko extension tubes with them. And so naturally, I went out after I bought this lens to look for an extension tube. Well, I went on Amazon and I found a lot of extension tubes. A lot of third-party makers made extension tubes for M42 mounts. The only thing I didn't like about it were the reviews. People were complaining that after they put extension tubes onto, onto the lens, somehow there's an internal glare that shows up in pictures. And so naturally, I stopped shopping around for third-party extension tube makers for this lens or for this mount. eBay, of course, the great eBay, you can almost find anything on there, did sell, or sellers on eBay, did have extension tubes for this lens in stock. And the best part was they weren't even that expensive. So I'm going to put this to the side. I'm going to bring in what I got for about $14 on eBay. So $85, $14, so for a total of $99. And that got me authentic extension tubes for the lens and, and a nice case with some felt lining inside. This can get some red carpet treatment once it's being stored. All metal construction fits this perfectly because these were made to work with each other. You get three rings, all screw on, all right, and the lens. $99 for an exceptional macro lens. This thing is so much more fun to use when you have the extension tubes. My favorite right now is the number two extension tube. And the only one thing is, it starts to get a little bit, bit ridiculous when you start putting these things on together because you're just extending that lens out more and more, right? All right. And then I'll put, I'll put this on. So this is the lens with the number two extension tube on. So far I've only used the number two because it fits my type of photo macro photography best. Um, it gets me really close to the subject um, and it still produces really sharp pictures. There is no glare that comes out from the internal reflection of the extension tubes as um, some people on uh, the Amazon reviews um, talked about regarding the third party extension tubes. I got so close to a B with this extension tube and the lens that I almost nudged the B with the tip of the lens. So I had to be really careful and because of course I didn't want to be yeah, uh, get stung by the bee. So here, so this is it. Ninety-nine dollars total, not including, not including, not including the, uh, the the lens adapter, of course. But that uh, you can find these really cheap online. All right. So, with that said, what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna head over to my computer, and I am going to show you some of the pictures that I recently took with this lens. I went to the farmer's market about a week ago and there was a ballet performance going on. Uh, the farmer's market once in a while will have a showcase of performers and it happened to be uh, this troupe that was performing that day. After I got my food I found a seat in the front and I took out my camera and I'm glad I brought my camera with me because um, I would not have had a chance to try this macro lens on moving human subjects. The difficult part was trying to capture all the movement, um, capture people freezing in the air you know, while they jumped, 
um, with a manual lens. I am not a good manual lens um, picture taker because I've always had my Canons and all my Canons had you know, lenses that were autofocus. So this, was, this is my first manual lens, but I was up to the challenge and with Fuji's really good focus peaking, I managed to get some really great shots. I'm really happy with how a lot of these pictures came out. And in general, um, this lens is so versatile. I am going to definitely keep it in my camera go bag indefinitely. This thing is not leaving my camera bag. I'm always gonna have it around. This picture is my favorite one out of all the performing pictures I took of the day. Um, as you can see, the female performer is in the, in the foreground and the male performer is in the background. Um, it's got this, uh, the, the day was overcast so there wasn't a lot of sunlight and this, this lens was able to capture pretty much um, what I saw th with my own eyes. So the, the, the color rendition from this lens is superb. Um, I think this, this picture speaks volumes. You see the gentleman all in the back in the wheelchair looking up. Um, you know, this picture is worth many words, um, but you know, you can interpret it how you like. But um, I just thought it's a very interesting shot where um, the gentleman in the back of the wheelchair is looking up to the performers, especially probably to the guy who was just airborne. Uh, but overall, loved how this picture came out. Uh, came out crisp, came out sharp. Uh, I took this at um, f4, and um, very happy with how it just came out. These are just some multicolored carrots that were available for sale at one of the farm stands. Now the next couple of pictures are of a bee in one of the other stands. One of the local farmers or florists, they were selling huge bundles of sunflowers, huge bouquets of sunflowers. And of course there are bees hovering all over those flowers. I so happened to spot one that was really close to me and I got in as close as I could without disturbing the bee and took a picture with the lens. And I'm very happy with how those pictures came out. Um, the bee was just doing its own thing. Um, it didn't seem as a threat, so I just took uh, several pictures, but these two are my favorite. These are not cropped. Um, I was in a pretty low light setting, so I did bump up some of the color here and some of the exposure just a little bit in post. But overall, um, you know, I love taking pictures like this with a macro lens. Unbelievable. The next three pictures I'm going to show you are going to be with that macro lens and the number two extension tube. Here you're going to see two beetles just, I guess, snacking on pollen or doing something. Um, there's a lot of detail that came out of the lens with the extension tube. Love the colors. I love how you can see the detail uh, with those tendrils coming out of the center of the flower and, um, you know, the two beetle butts or just wiggling about when I was thinking of this picture. This is just a close-up of a plant that I took of. Um, I didn't really find anything too interesting, interesting about it, but I was out testing the lens and um, the lighting was good and so I took a shot. Funny thing is, I didn't realize there were spider webs surrounding the flower until I looked at it on my computer. This last shot has got to be my favorite bee shot of all time. I've taken a lot of bee shots over the years, um, but this one is unbelievable. This is a, bum a bumblebee that I found lurking in the shadows, just doing its thing. It wasn't really moving. I don't know if it was sleeping or if it was taking a nap. I don't know. It was not really moving and it didn't mind me being right next to it. I, I knelt down. It was in a shadowed area. I had to bump up the ISO a little bit to 3200. 3200 f4 and um, a relatively fast shutter speed. I think I was at a, five, a 250 shutter speed here. But using focus peaking, I was able to bring out bring out the uh, the focus towards the eyes and the fur and the legs. And I took a few of these pictures, and I got so close with the lens. Um, this is the bee I was talking about earlier. I almost nudged this bee with the lens because I, was, I had no idea how close it was. Now, thinking back with 
the other pictures I took with my Canon macro lens, especially with the, with the extension tube. And even though even though the Canon was a one-to-one -one magnification, I was never able to get a picture that clear with that lens or that sharp with that lens. And so I am just so impressed. This picture made me love that that lens, this Pentax um, Tacumar so much more. It's just such an amazing lens. I, uh, I cannot rave enough about it. I really do recommend you trying it out if you're able to um, get a M42 mount for your camera. Um, it's just a fun lens to play around with. Simply amazing. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my review of the lens and enjoyed taking a look at the pictures with me. Please subscribe if you like my content and give a thumbs up. And until next time, I will talk to you later. Goodbye.